Some believe the reason why Netanyahu was willing to commit genocide is due to the stance of Hamas that they reject the existence of Israel as a state and proclaim that the entire land of Palestine, including present-day Israel, is considered sacred and an integral part of the Islamic faith. Hamas believes that Palestine is an Islamic waqf, endowment, land, which means it is a religious trust that cannot be given away, sold, or compromised in any way. How is this argument articulated? The argument that Hamas's rejection of Israel's existence and its belief in Palestine as an Islamic waqf, endowment, land motivated Netanyahu to commit genocide is a complex one with several nuances. It's important to note that this argument is not universally accepted and has been criticized by some as being an oversimplification of the conflict between Israel and Palestine. Proponents of this argument point to several factors that they believe support their claim. First, they highlight Hamas's long-standing refusal to recognize Israel's right to exist. Hamas's founding charter, which was adopted in 1987, explicitly calls for the destruction of Israel and the establishment of an Islamic state in its place. This rejectionist stance, according to proponents of the argument, has made it difficult to achieve a peaceful resolution to the conflict. Second, Proponents of the argument argue that Hamas's belief in Palestine as an Islamic waqf land has led to an unwillingness to compromise on territorial claims. The waqf concept, which is rooted in Islamic law, prohibits the sale or transfer of land that has been designated as a religious endowment. Hamas's adherence to this concept, proponents argue, has made it difficult to negotiate a two-state solution to the conflict, as it would require the Palestinians to cede some of the land they claim as waqf. Third, proponents of the argument point to Israel's history of military action against Hamas and other Palestinian factions as evidence of Netanyahu's willingness to commit genocide. They argue that Israel's use of force, particularly during the 2014 Gaza War, has resulted in the deaths of thousands of Palestinian civilians and has created a humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip. These actions, they argue, constitute a form of genocide as they are intended to destroy the Palestinian people. Critics of this argument contend that it is an overly simplistic and politicized interpretation of the conflict between Israel and Palestine. They argue that Hamas's rejection of Israel's existence is rooted in its belief that the creation of Israel was a historical injustice that has resulted in the displacement of millions of Palestinians. They also point out that the Waqf concept is not the only factor preventing a two-state solution, as there are other significant obstacles, such as the issue of Jerusalem's status. Additionally, critics argue that the label of genocide is not appropriate for describing Israel's actions against Hamas, as it implies a deliberate and systematic attempt to exterminate the Palestinian people. They argue that Israel's actions, while often harsh and disproportionate, are primarily aimed at suppressing Hamas's militancy and protecting Israeli civilians. In conclusion, the argument that Hamas's stance motivated Netanyahu to commit genocide is a complex one with several nuances. While there are valid arguments to support this claim, there are also significant criticisms that should be considered. It is important to approach this issue with nuance and avoid making overly simplistic generalizations.